have enjoyed, you know, listening to uh, various speakers, uh, um, you know, the points they made, uh, uh, you know, um, it's difficult to, uh, to summarize the China-European relations in one sentence. Yeah. <laughs> Trace the uh, right in the last year we we fight pan pandemic is extremely difficult uh, for our relations, but the, who knows, you know, the conflict is, is actually emerging. Uh, uh, and I got the impression, you know, uh, our relations has been increasingly interrupted uh, by external factors, you, you know, it's not just uh, our bilateral uh, uh, factors. Um, problems is there all the time, you know, we have uh, different political systems, you know, if you look at the European Commission's uh, China policy paper, you know, human rights um, and others, Hong Kong, uh, you, you know, uh, there are a lot of uh, 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 disagreement between us, uh, um, but we have enjoyed a strong trade economic link uh, for the past uh, uh, decades. Um, Shun Yun Hu, uh, Director Shun Yun Hu is right, you know, uh, um, China, European Union becomes China's number one since Central Eastern European countries joined the European Union. You see, that makes a difference because there are 10 countries suddenly joined the European Union in 2004. So that makes a big difference. And the, the Brexit <laughs> also affects our trade relations because the UK is a strong power, a, a, a powerful uh, economy. When UK left the European Union, Austin, Dongmeng, passed over the European Union, become, became China's number one in 2020. But we are still, you know, most important trade powers. Uh, uh, we still need each other. Uh, um, so how to really evaluate our relationship? Um, I, I do appreciate, you know, our community, business communities in both China and Europe who wants to carry on our relations. You know, they see the um, dependence from both sides. You know, they think China is a big market and they think China potentially is going to become more important. And, and uh, uh, but at the same time, you know, uh, geopolitical issues do, uh, uh, you know, um, make some negative impact because people start thinking about uh, can we rely on China so much? <laughs> so that is the question has been being asked by people uh, in Europe. Uh, um, we do have similar dance here, you know, because uh, people have come to realize value issues becomes more and more important in, in, in Europe. You know, uh, I remember, you know, when the Europeans are talk, coming to China, normally in, in the past years, you know, they strength for the corporations, commercial interests. We have a difference, I mentioned. But now, you don't know when to start. All that highlights is uphold our values and the interests. <laughs> So that means, you know, you know, uh, 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 it's not just uh, coming to do business. And uh, um, before Joe Biden came to power, before Putin launched the special military action, European countries already think China is a systemic rival in 2019. If that was agreement, uh, agreement among all the member states, it's not just a one Brussels invention. We take this seriously. This, is, this will inevitably 
affects our relations. So, um, I mean, you know, normally in normal time, Chinese officials, Chinese top leaders need to have more dialogues, communications. Tell European counterparts, China is not a security threat to you. We are too far away. But pandemic prevents this from coming. You know, have a, a um, video dialogue um, means diplomacy is nothing. You know, if we, we can have talk, we can do business uh, diplomacy through video. Why should we send our envoys to other countries to stay there for years to, to have talk with far in me, in a bit? <laughs> Why? <laughs> uh, you know, to make friends, to explain. Uh, why European ambassador even told me, you know, the leaders spend three days, sometimes weeks travel to another country. The most valuable moment is three minutes. It's not three days. It's, it's in the corridor, even without interpreter, eye contact, say, we, we need to cooperate. That's the turn. They said face to face. That makes the visit, three days visit, weekday visit successful. Believe it or not, I believe. So uh, pandemic, um, we must quickly end this isolation. I mean, we unless we isolate each other. You know, we cannot go to Europe. Europeans cannot come to. China, I, I, I talked to a, a colleague who is working on Germany. I said, uh, look, the German new chancellor, the first Asian visit, visit is Tokyo, not Beijing. This is not a fashion at all because Merkel traveled to China almost every, once a year. I was told, thinking about the pandemic, he couldn't come. <laughs> so he chose to Tokyo because Tokyo have no this kind of restriction. I don't know this is true or not, but uh, uh, this makes a difference. Uh, uh, so I really want to take this opportunity to say, you know, uh, we need to step up communications. We, we need to overcome a lot of, you know, uh, uh, difficulties um, to, to talk to each other. Um, second, you know, we, we need to really encourage our business people to, to do everything to maintain our uh, cooperations. Uh, uh, you know, interdependence sometimes become dangerous it's because the political factor is working. So that means, you know, uh, uh, we need to explain, you know, uh, uh, thank you. <laughs>